Welcome to our lesson on segment midpoint and segment perpendicular bisector. The goals of the video are to understand the difference between equal and congruent, determine the midpoint of a segment, and also to construct a perpendicular bisector of a segment. Equal is used with measurement. Congruent is used with figures. If two figures are congruent, they are the same shape and the same size. So we can use the equal sign when referring to the length of a segment. Here the measurement of segment AB or the length of AB is equal to eight centimeters. And we can use an equal sign when giving the measurement of an angle. The measurement of angle ABC is 42 degrees. However, when we're talking about congruent, notice that we're comparing geometric figures. We can say that segment AB is congruent to segment BA and we can also say that angle ABC is congruent to angle CBA. Notice the vertex in both cases is point B. So again, the big difference is the equal sign is used for measurement and congruence is used to compare geometric shapes or figures. Now let's talk about midpoints. A midpoint is a point on a line segment that divides a segment in, into two congruent segments. So the midpoint of segment DE looks like it'd be right about here. Let's label this point M. So if M is the midpoint of segment DE, then segment DM is congruent with segment ME. Now let's take a look at some different ways to determine the midpoint of a segment. The first is with a ruler. Using a ruler, we can measure the length of a given segment and then from that length, mark off half the distance. So I'm not sure if you can see on your screen, but the length of the segment is 18 centimeters. It starts at zero and it stops at the mark of 18 centimeters. And half of 18 would be nine. So if we mark off nine centimeters, that would be the location of the midpoint. So here's nine on the ruler. And therefore, this point right here would be the midpoint of this segment. So if this endpoint is point L and this endpoint here is point O, we know that segment LM is congruent to segment MO, which means they're also equal in length. And to make sure that is known, there's a way to mark these segments so that someone knows they're equal. If we put one tick mark here for the segment LM and we put one tick mark here for the segment MO, this indicates they are equal in length. The next way to determine a midpoint would be if the segment is on the coordinate plane, we can take the average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates of the endpoints of the segment and this will give us the coordinates of the midpoint. So what's really happening here is x1 plus x2 divided by two is a way to determine the midpoint of the horizontal distance somewhere in here and then y1 plus y2 divided by two is where to determine the midpoint of the vertical distance somewhere in here. So x1 plus x2 divided by two gives us the x-coordinate of the midpoint and y1 plus y2 divided by two gives us the y-coordinate of the midpoint. Let's go ahead and use this formula by determining the endpoints of this segment. So this endpoint here would be the point negative two, negative three and this endpoint here would be the point four, one. So the midpoint will be x1 plus x2 or negative two plus four divided by two and then y1 plus y2 will be negative three plus one divided by two. So negative two plus four is two, two divided by two would be one and here we'd have negative three plus one that's negative two divided by two or negative one. So the midpoint is the point one, negative one, which is here. So we'll go ahead and label this M for a midpoint. And the last way to determine the midpoint of a segment is through a construction using a compass as we see pictured here. So let's go through how we can do that. The first thing we need to do is open the compass so that it's more than half the length of the entire segment. And then we take the point of the compass and we construct a circle or at least swing one arc above the segment, somewhere in here, and then another arc below the segment, maybe somewhere in here. 
Then we take the point and place it on the other end point. And again, we either construct a circle or swing an arc somewhere in here above the segment and then another arc somewhere below the segment in here. And now if we construct the segment through the intersection of these arcs, it'll pass through the midpoint of the segment. So looking at this vertical dashed line here, notice how it passes through the intersection of the two arcs, meaning this would be the midpoint of this given segment. There's also something special about this segment here drawn through the intersection of these arcs. It's the perpendicular bisector of the segment. A perpendicular bisector is a line, ray, or segment that passes through the midpoint of a segment and forms a right angle with the segment. So again, this dashed segment here is called the perpendicular bisector, meaning it bisects the segment. So this segment here is congruent with this segment here and it also forms a right angle with the given segment. And of course, we can easily convert this segment into a ray or a line if we so desired. And the last thing I want to mention is there are an infinite number of segment bisectors through the midpoint. However, there's only one perpendicular bisector. So we could draw an infinite number of segments through this midpoint that would not be perpendicular to the segment, but there's only one bisector that would be perpendicular, and that's the one we sketched here. I think we'll stop here for this video. I hope you found this helpful.